Bring me everyone. What do you mean everyone? EVERYONE! Oh yeah, look at those numbers. That's pretty big, impressive numbers for a light this size. But now keep in mind, those numbers aren't actually correct. Those numbers are for the black version of this light. I have chosen to go with the Coyote. And we're going to discuss the differences here in a second. But first, I want to kind of orient you to this knife, introduce you to it, let you see what it's all about. And then we'll get into numbers in just a couple of minutes. The first and most important thing to mention about this light is its incredibly simple UI that makes it extremely easy to use. There's nothing to memorize. There's no fancy combos or half-click combinations. Just simple and straightforward. Fully click the tail clicky. It is a forward clicky, so you can get some momentary out of it if that's what you prefer. So it takes a full click. Now you're done with the tail clicky. Now the side switch takes over. And all you're going to do is not activate strobe like an idiot. <laughs> you're just simply going to push it to go through the various modes of brightness. It's just that simple. Now, if you want strobe, all you do is hold it down. And now you've got your strobe. You can go from your super low moonlight to your low 90 lumens, medium 350, high of 700 lumens, and, oops, sorry about that, the turbo is 1600. So you've actually got one of the easiest to use lights on the market that still gives you incredible performance. In a nutshell, what you've got is a tactical style light and an EDC light all in one. Normally, I want my tail switch to be recessed. However, I don't feel like I can accidentally turn this one on in my pocket because to turn it on, it really does have to be a full click. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to turn this down. Again, there's no half clicks to memorize. You can half click if you want to momentarily use it. No big deal. And it's going to work on the memory. So let's say we have this on its lowest mode, right? And if you momentarily click it, that's the mode it's going to go to. It's not going to blast on high. So an added layer of security for you in your pocket is every time you go to turn the light off, switch it back over to a low mode that doesn't generate any heat. And you've got absolutely nothing to worry about. So if you're super paranoid, that's the best way to operate it. And for 65 bucks, yep, this is 65 bucks, you get a powerhouse in your pocket. Now we'll talk about numbers. Now we'll get into that. If you buy the black version, it's 1,900 lumens with 380 meters of throw, which is 1,246 feet. That's a good amount of throw for a light that's this size and this skinny, and it's running off of a single... SFT40 emitter and an 18650 battery. Not a, not a big, giant, crazy battery with incredible storage and incredible power. This is your standard run-of-the-mill 18650. Now, again, that's if you buy the black version. Mine is the Coyote, and I sacrificed some performance for my color preference. As you see, it matches a lot of EDC gear that I really, really enjoy owning. 
I love coyote, FDE, all those kind of desert tan colors going on. So when I saw that this was available in this color, it was a no-brainer. I absolutely had to have it. And it's really not a huge power difference when you get down to it. So coyote is a more neutral 5000K. The black version gives you a 6500 Kelvin, so it's a uh, very super white light. I'm not an enormous fan of that unless I'm just getting a light or building a light for just showing off and doing pure performance and making it look even brighter than it actually is. I like slightly warmer tints. I like neutral to slightly warm for my everyday carry stuff. So you're getting that more neutral 5000K SFT40, as I mentioned before. It's got 1600 lumens versus the 1900 lumens in the black. And the throw is still an impressive 352 meters, which is 1154 feet. And again, that's up against the black, which is 380 meters. And yeah, that's more impressive, but that's not really an enormous difference. One thing I appreciate is the fact that in a single emitter, fairly skinny, smaller light, I'm able to enjoy the benefits of a good amount of flood for, you know, searching around my immediate area. I've got a nice, clearly defined hotspot, and I've got some nice spill. I'm not crazy about the shadow portion, this little ring right here, as it splits up the spill. And then the cutoff isn't dramatic and sharp. It just kind of slowly cuts off. I like this beam a lot. Again, I wish that little bit of shadowing wasn't there, but what are you going to do? And yes, at a distance, that's going to be accentuated just a little bit more. So having all of this in one, having good throw and then having a good wide area lit up around my immediate surroundings is fantastic. There are definitely times as a flashlight lover, as a flashaholic, that you'll carry multiple lights because you know you're carrying one that's going to be super throwy and you're going to be able to punch out crazy distances, but it's not going to be so useful for uh, your immediate area because it's a very focused beam. Maybe you're even carrying an LEP because, hey man, I get to fire that thing off a half mile or more away and see things. But when you're around your campsite, it's not doing you any good whatsoever. With a light like this, you can go out, whether you're carrying a small pack or this is actually just in your pocket, you've got one light that's not a pocket hog. It's just an 18650 battery size light. And it's going to give you everything that you're most likely going to need on a standard outing. Especially if it's you're going out to walk the dog or something innocuous like that. You're just walking around the neighborhood and you're just kind of using this to, to look around the immediate area. And then, oh, what's going on there a half a block away in the distance? It's going to be useful for you to be able to see and do all that with just the one light. So there's definitely convenience built into this light. I love the fact that you've got impressive lumens and impressive candela in one light is what I'm trying to say. You got 30,976 candela on the coyote and 36,100 for the black. So yeah, it'll punch out there. Let's talk about what comes in the box, shall we? Now, I know this isn't the most exciting part of any review. However, it is one of the most useful parts because you kind of want to know what you're getting when you're paying the money. Going to get your instruction manual, which I do advise you read, but it's not imperative on this one because it is simple and easy to use. It will come with an 18650 battery in here. And you do have, by the way, in case I forgot to mention it, a USB-C style port right there. And if you're worried about 
tearing off that delicate rubber, they give you a secondary USB-C port rubber cover along with extra O-rings, which I don't have sitting out here. I must have moved this stuff. Is that what I did? Yeah, I guess I did. So my apologies. You're going to be getting your charging cable so you can plug in directly to the light or your option, you can just unscrew the tail cap and then take your 18650 right on out and charge it on your own charger. Let's go ahead and put that back together. And you're going to get the lanyard. This style of light, I typically don't put a lanyard on. I don't have a need for it. If it's an odd, weirdly shaped light that may have a very slick finish, every now and then I'll do a lanyard, but typically uh, I wanna tie my own 550 paracord with maybe a bead of some sort on it. I'm really not uh, huge on the provided lanyards, but it's really good that they offer those and go ahead and set you up with it. Now you've also got the nylon pouch. If you're a dork, <laughs> you like carrying nylon pouches on your belt, uh, you'll be able to do that here, carry your light on your belt where maybe it's easier to access than inside of your pocket. Get this stuff out of the way. In the end, I think it's a brilliant light, but no razzle-dazzle. There's nothing that slaps you in the face and makes you go, wow, aesthetically. But in my opinion, this is more of a tool-style light anyway, so only the performance needs to wow you. And yep, this one does. I think I've decided after watching my last couple of videos that it might be smarter to do voiceovers instead of having live audio. Too many crazy noises in the background. All right, so here we're able to get a good look at how effective this light is from standing behind the, uh, the camera here. It really is a great multi-purpose light. Throws a lot of light really, really far, especially for the size of light that it is. And it gives you plenty of spill, plenty to look around with, plenty to walk with, no issues whatsoever. So I'm going to take a quick walk down here to the, uh, to the end of the dock. And you can see how well lit everything is. Nice and bright. And if I'm not mistaken, I've got it on the 1600 lumen turbo mode right here. It's lighting the way nicely. And even all the way across the waters, the water there into the tree line, doing a fantastic job. And it's a nice dark night. We were supposed to be able to see the Aurora Borealis tonight, and the sky is a little kind of bluish, but that's really about it. We had way too much cloud cover for it to uh, break through for us to see it. So as you see walking back, I'm not pointing it at the camera. I'm kind of pointing it down at the dock, and plenty, plenty of light being thrown out of there. Got to tell you, Ace Beam makes a hell of an EDC light. Subscribe and come back. I've got a ton more light videos coming.